This is my my uh, unofficial merch. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, you'll just we'll have we'll have to talk about that. Yeah. Oh, hey, we started. Hey, uh, everybody, welcome to uh, Wire Wednesday. I guess this is number twenty-four. We have a, a great interview coming up today with a, a I don't know if y'all saw the title, a former ortho lab tech gone full time YouTuber. And uh, first, I want to introduce my intrepid co-host Steve Zara. He's he's pretty much my unofficial co-host on all these. So there's Steve Zara with Zara Dental Lab. Say hi to everybody and What's show up, your, everybody. How are you doing? Showing off this your be case an interesting pans. Interview. Yeah. yeah. Showing off my case pans. No. Yeah, all your work. I got like four, you know. Uh, so I gotta start we'll sending you some stuff. I know. <laughs> Keep you busy. Send me work. <laughs> but our interviewer, interviewee, yeah, today is Scott Simpson from the Scott and Camber YouTube channel. Say hi, Scott, to everybody. Hey, everybody. That he uh he was a I. I when did we first connect? You were trying to get your CDT or something, and I think we connected. And yeah, uh, it was. Uh, well, I've had my CDT, I think, for three years. So three or four years. Oh man, I don't remember. So it was probably 2014, maybe. Okay, yeah, that. yeah, that sounds about right. And yeah. uh, so we've been kind of staying in touch this whole time. Uh, but we have Whoa. some official questions we're going to ask you. All Some right. hard hitting questions like, "What's your favorite color?" And <laughs> <laughs> favorite color is blue. Oh, all right. That's an easy one. Simple. And, uh, <laughs> um, so what came about this? Okay, so I looked at your channel today, this morning, and you're at two hundred fifty thousand subscribers. I checked it again because I was going to watch it, your latest video just to kind of catch up. You're at 260,000 subscribers. It went up 10,000 <laughs> just in a half a day. And uh, I, I don't know if that's a usual thing for you or, or what. Uh, no, it, what usually happens is YouTube will, uh, they'll kind of uh, have a, hold on to a backlog of subscribers. And I think it might be a, um, a YouTube like security thing to make sure that when you're, when you're moving quickly, that every subscriber is legitimate and so they don't show you um they don't show accurate numbers and i think what happened today was it probably just rolled over and so like they did their double check and they're like okay ten thousand subscribers are these ten thousand subscribers are good so let's just release them on his page and so oh. now you can yeah now you can see them so i i think i've only gained like 100 subscribers so far today so it's, <laughs> it's not not uh not as cool as ten thousand, but but we're still moving forward, so that's that's good. Moving up. Yeah. <laughs> Steve and I have a long way to go, so we're, gonna, yeah, we're, we're, waiting, for that, we're waiting for that rollover. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're holding back that two hundred and fifty thousand for you guys. <laughs> yeah, that'll come any day now. Uh, I think yeah. it'll just tick right on over. And uh, so, well, so, all right, Scott, so, Scott, go ahead and um, tell them what you used to do for a living. Just yeah. Yeah, so I used to um, I, I used to own a, uh, an ortho lab, and uh, I'd work out of my house, and um, it was great. I loved the ortho lab, and uh, I I worked with one major client, their group of orthodontic offices here in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. Cade Cade uh, knew who they were. They they went out of business, or they they didn't go out of business. They sold their business to an even larger group last year, and uh, they didn't want to keep me on which was kind of a blessing in disguise because that exact same month, YouTube started providing enough income for us to live off of full time. And um, so here I am, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I've well, been doing YouTube now for almost a year, and, or YouTube full time for almost a year. And it's been very exciting. Well, when did you start your family vlog channel? If, and, and maybe describe what type of uh, YouTube channel you have, if what genre you're in. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we started our family channel. Well, I get you know we we officially started in 2009, but we didn't really do anything with it until 2014. And then in mm. November of 2014, we started posting family content. Um, to to back up a little bit further, my wife and I wrote 
two motivational books in 2010, 2011. And I used to go around and give motivational speeches to uh, companies, groups, organizations, things like that. And so in 2014, I wanted to, my son was born and um, it made it a little bit more difficult to travel. So I wanted to find a way to, to inspire people uh, from home and, you know, have the same reach. And uh, so we started posting motivational content on YouTube. And then very quickly uh, after that, it, it you know, w doing a full-time job, uh, as you all know, Steve especially right now, uh, mm -hmm. having a lab full-time is, um, and doing, trying to do motivational speeches and traveling and even, even posting, uploading content is very difficult to do when you're, when you're trying to run a busy lab. And so we just decided, I'm not going to write motivational content to post on YouTube, but we're just going to show our family because it's, it's very easy to just pick up your camera, <laughs> show what's going on, edit, chop it up nicely, and then post it. It was a lot easier than, than writing and scripting and memorizing scripts for motivational content. So anyway, so here we are four years later, still doing family content, and uh, we do a variety of different types of content, and it's... Um, it's been very rewarding and very fun and fulfills a creative side for me. And uh, yeah, so it's been good. Well, Scott, I think that's where, you know, being an orthodontic technician, I think that's where you, where I see when I watch your videos, I can see the creativity part. And I'm, I think that's where you, you know, our minds kind of think the same. Kate's kind of yeah. the same way where we're, you're always like creating in orthodontics. You're always making new things. You're always thinking outside of the box. I see that in your videos. Like when I'm watching your family channel, it's, it's amazing to see your progress. For instance, I was watching your video, your very first video today. I, I checked it out. You, you, uh, no. And I'll remind you what it was. You were shaving and you had something in your face and you're like just being this goofball. But I was watching like how you made a career, how you're making a career out of this. And I can just see the creativity. I can just see like how you've taken being an orthodontic technician, all the background, and then turn it into a career on YouTube, which is crazy to think about, but it's working. And God bless you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's been, it's been a really cool journey to get here, but it, it hasn't been without lots of struggle to you. So the, as well, we all know, I, YouTube's ups and downs can be frustrating <laughs> at points. I think the stress of not a consistent paycheck has got to be different for you. <laughs> like being a yeah, YouTuber. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, YouTube is um, it's uh, it well, it's it's like orthodontics, right? It's uh, in the lab. We uh, we'd get extremely busy over you know uh, July and August would be the best months of the year. Um, and YouTube, it's November, December are the best months of the year. So oh. it just kind of changes. Yeah, yeah, because you have. Uh, what happens is that all the advertisers come in, they dump a whole lot of money uh, into influencing um, into uh, YouTube uh, during Christmas, the holiday months. Right. And, and so CPMs are through the roof and it's, it's really, it's, it's pretty awesome. But if you, um, if you don't save come January when it's 10% of what December was, then it, it can, it can hurt. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I didn't even think that YouTube would have season, but that makes total sense. Um, uh, yeah, that was uh, really interesting. So your transition from, you know, it was an easy decision to go, you know, when that big company released your position, it was an easy decision to go, hey, you know, it, it, it worked out that YouTube income was, it could replace it. Yeah, so they they let me go. Um, they let me go right before Thanksgiving of last year, and so we were right in the middle of the whole the the the, uh, the awesome advertiser push for for the fall. And so we it, it was really a seamless transition. I I mean I I don't think that I saw any negative impact on my income uh, at least until it was probably January, February, you know, when you get into the slow months on YouTube that you're like, oh, okay, what am I going to do now? <laughs> but, uh, but you know, you, you just plan and prepare and, and, um, and we were just fine. So made it to summer and then summer is another big time of the year. And then, and then, yeah. So then you just got to keep, you just got to plan and prepare for 
the lulls and the highs and the lows on YouTube. Well, I think that's a lot like orthodontics. You just explain that we have highs and lows too. You just kind of have to really watch your dollars in certain months. You know? Yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That uh, it's kind of going on that uh, for someone and Steve had a question. Let's see if I, have this your thoughts on how you would go about starting a dental channel from scratch knowing what you know now about youtube like if somebody out there is watching this and they want to do their own maybe it doesn't steve do you mean just dental or any kind of niche uh channel well i was thinking more of a dental just because we're in that field but okay. anyone can start a youtube channel a family vlog like yourself scott um what would you what suggestions would you give to someone who's starting off today because i always said or my thought is you need to start youtube works it just keeps growing on each other you know it keeps growing it's like a, a downhill spiral but you need to get started so what advice would you give to someone who's like thinking about like hey i want to um build my business up and maybe make youtube videos what advice would you give them yeah so um you know, obviously, as you guys know, uh, um, YouTube does not work very well for for local businesses, right? You, you've got to have a business that it, that has a reach outside of your local market. Um, otherwise, you're you know you're you're going to spin your wheels trying to trying to uh, build up a massive channel. Uh, where you're getting, you know, say you get uh, 400,000 views in a month, well, only a fraction of those people are going to be local. So it's uh, YouTube works best for individuals who are wanting to have a reach outside of the local market. Um, the, as far as like starting a YouTube channel, I think that the most important thing is to uh, obviously have one niche. And sometimes that, that hurts us uh, uh, as a family channel on YouTube because we, we do a variety of different content. It's all falls under the uh, umbrella of family channel, but it's um, you know we'll do music videos and we'll do uh, we'll play games and and so there's so many different aspects of our channel, it's so much variety that I think the algorithm sometimes has a hard time finding out where to place us or where to categorize us. And so for somebody who's just new getting onto YouTube, I'd say make sure you have a niche. And, and even to go uh, a little bit further and say, uh, make sure you have a specialty, something that you're really, that you really focus on, that you feel like you do better than other people. And so like Steve, um, you know, you do uh, a lot of herps. I, I, would, fo I would do, um, I'd focus on herps a little bit. And uh, because you do a good job at it, you do more than any uh, other ortho tech I've ever met in my life. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so that's like your specialty. And so, um, so I think that, uh, specializing is, um, is something that's important. And then really my, I, I really feel like anybody has the ability to be a YouTuber. Um, I don't think that it takes a special kind of person. I think that it takes patience and persistence and then also a willingness to improve, uh, because if you come, you know, everybody's first video is always horrendous, but if, if video 100 is exactly the same as video one, then, then you're probably not going to be successful. But if you're willing to take time to watch people who are successful and people who train YouTubers how to be successful and learn from them and then update your, upgrade your equipment, uh, uh, work on your delivery, things like that, then going from one to a hundred, there'll be a stark difference and you'll start to have built a loyal following. So, yeah, um, I, yeah, go ahead. That's what I just said. I saw your first video and you guys were discussing you, you and Camber were talking about your cameras that you were shooting with. You're using your phones. Um, she had an <laughs> S4, which is kind of funny to go back in time to see the quality of just the phones have improved over the last three years, but it's like for Kate and I to put money into it, we're not making money. So it's kind of, it's a hard way to build your channel because you're, there's not as much, um, how should I say it? Popularity in dental compared to family. You know, like you do have more variety where you're reaching so many more people. And the other thing I noticed that like with um, starting a dental channel, 
the people who are watching our videos, let's say for instance, a doctor wa wants to learn about herbs, for instance, and he types in herbs, he might not even like, let me look something up on YouTube. So he'll look it up on YouTube, but he doesn't even understand like what a subscriber is. He doesn't even understand what um, you have to sign in to become a subscriber, to leave a like, you know, they don't like understand the process, which is frustrating. Because for instance, I asked my dad, I said, hey dad, do you subscribe to my YouTube channel? Now my dad is a dental technician for life. And you know what he told yeah. me, which, which is kind of funny. He's like, well, why would I subscribe to it? That means I have to pay for something. That's old school <laughs> thinking, but yeah. that's the reality. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, and I'm like, no, it's all free. And he's like, nothing's for free. You know, like he's got that old school. He's like, nothing's for free, Steve. <laughs> I'm like, no, really you just subscribe. It just means that you're going to be no coming out, which is ironic because that's how they think. And then I had to help him just to get, you know, and then of course it was like, well, I don't want to give my information because YouTube asked for, um, you know, your, the minute you sign on to become a, a loyal watcher of YouTube to um, leave a like or leave a comment, you need to sign into to Google, which they wouldn't, they need to know everything about you, which they already do. So don't worry about that. Right. <laughs> so it's just an interesting for in the dental people. It's much, I think it's much harder to grow, but it is, you know, it does work. You just have to put so much more time into it. And Cade and I always laugh about it. Cause he's like, man, you work so much harder in this than I did. I'm like, well, you started so much earlier. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's the same from going on here out. You know what I mean? That's what I was saying. The best time to start is yesterday. So yeah, so, you know, for, uh, for businesses that are wanting to grow, um, and especially uh, in an ortho lab like yours, you guys aren't looking to pick up doctors with your, um, with, your, uh, uh, with your videos, with your content, right? You're not, you're not looking to pick up more business. Or maybe, you know, maybe, Kate, I don't know, I don't know if you are. Steve, I, I, don't, I can't imagine that you are with the load no, size that I, you have. No, but, I don't. But, but, I mean, both of you guys are familiar with Tim Smoyer. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, Tim Schmoyer, yes. he if you listen to him, um, he started his YouTube business uh, and then within six months, he was making ten thousand dollars a month off of his channel of five thousand subscribers. And the way that he did that was by creating information products that he would sell to uh, he would pitch at the end of each of his videos and and sell to uh, his viewership. So there's so many different ways to make money on YouTube. It's not always about the views. For me, it's about the views because most of my money comes from AdSense. Well, uh, it did. In the last couple months, we've had a lot of brand sponsorships, but um, which is another way to make money on YouTube. But, but for uh, somebody getting started on YouTube that's in your position, I would say, uh, Steve, create a, um, a, a, a product that you sell for $30 that teaches somebody how to do a herbs appliance and then pitch it at the end of each one of your videos. And you're not going to have a whole ton of sales, but every time you sell something, it's fully automated. You don't have to do a herbs appliance to make right. that money. You know, you don't have to spend that time to make that money. It's, it's all, it's completely passive stream of income at that point. And Cade, for you, you know, train people, sell a, 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 a CDT toolkit, you know, that's like, hey, all the things you need to know about the CDT. And I sell it for $19.95. Um, and, you know, I, I guarantee your results or money back, right? Yeah. <laughs> so something like that. And, and you don't have to have a massive following to make a substantial income when you are, uh, when you're a specialist, when you're, when you have something to offer that other people might not, not necessarily have, or, or you have something that's in demand, you know, you're training people how to do these appliances. Well, take it up a notch and, and create a, a, a booklet that, uh, you know, has all the information in it or create a Patreon or anything like that with, with extended information and training. That's what I that's had awesome. started, uh, getting that idea from Tim. Uh, yeah. and I, I started a Patreon channel and, and I do, live recordings of my video. So when I go to create a video, I live stream it, unlist it to my patrons and they can join in and become part of the recording process of the video. And okay, cool. that's something new I'm trying. And, uh, and then I'm, I've got to revamp. And Steve asked me what my big announcement was I had last month. 
And uh, it was, I'm revamping my website as a pay service so you can have access to all my archives in a nice. searchable, like you want to learn labial bows, go here, there's four videos listed under labial bows. So, uh, but I think Steve's uh, selling something for herps because I would probably buy that. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I don't do them very often and it'd be nice to have a reference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so i mean that's um... um one of the things scott i wanted to ask you about yeah um i've talked to you in the over the year like over the last couple since i've known you last two years and one of the things i noticed that you said that you were thinking about doing lecturing um more like to go around the country and help kids or do something. And I was thinking what would be ideal for like us to work in because of YouTube, of the growth that we've had in our channels and that you know people know who we are, is to do like some sort of social media thing in the dental. Because you are a person that shows people how to grow your channel because you have insight. We have insight on how, you know, getting people to watch your videos and what to do and what not to do. And I just think it would be, Somewhere along the line, I think in the future, we might be doing something in a lecture circle of somewhere that outside of the box, like going to the um, the convention in Chicago and working with people. So there's is opportunities outside of YouTube just because of name. Said you've grown your channel so much that you have all that insight on growing a channel, growing an audience, you know, what I mean, like growing a YouTube audience or just growing an audience in general. And Cade, you've done very well with your channel. So I just think that there's always opportunity outside of YouTube, you know, to grow and make money and to do other things. You like talking about YouTube, like obviously you're in the YouTube, so it's exciting to talk about and you know so yeah. much and every day is a learning experience. You learn something like, wow, that really works or that doesn't work. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, a big experiment. So I just think there's plenty of opportunity out there maybe in the future, so. Absolutely. I went to a convention um, last week. It was actually here local, uh, Video Marketing World. And um, one of the guys said something that really stuck out to me. He said that there are a lot of these guys who started on YouTube back when YouTube first came out in 2006, 2007. And they, um, you know, they got to, they were the first ones to get to a million subscribers. And they, you know, they did it before YouTube was even massively popular like it is today. Um, and now they still have their channels, but their channels are only getting, you know, 10,000 views a day. Nothing that's like quite like they used to get or it used to be, you know, a million views a day. And yet they can still go into places and be treated like a social media expert because they have a million subscribers. Um, and so there is clout that comes from being a leader in your field or a leader on YouTube. And you guys, I, I don't know how many other uh, dental labs are out there, but uh, from what I've seen, you, you two have some of the bigger channels for the dental and the dental lab side where you could be, yeah, you could be paid to speak at, um, you know, some of these conferences and conventions, some of these dental conferences and, and uh, things that are taking place all over the world right now. So be, because you have something valuable to add. Well, considering I'm a administrator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I was saying, Scott, that you could actually be part of that because you have so much insight on the growing, you know, the knowledge, the, you know, those key things by going to meetings and learning about YouTube, the kind of the stuff that most people don't know. Because I always personally I have a lot of people ask me and they're like, how are you growing your YouTube channel? What do you do? And you can go on for days talking about it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. <laughs> talking about how much information you know behind the scenes of like just analytics alone yeah like what yeah, works and sure. what doesn't work so it's it's pretty cool and i imagine like you could probably start a service in the future in the near future or if you can't do it now is to start up channels you know like pay people like people would pay you to get that information I and mean, it's valuable you know what I mean? Well, it's funny you say that because i i've been i actually am working with a few different channels right now um, one of the channels that I've worked with has, they, they passed me, uh, a couple, it was a couple months ago. Now he's got almost a half million subscribers. <laughs> Another one that, yeah, I know it's, it's, oh, it's pretty cool. Passing you? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Now they're passing me. Yeah. 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 Which is, which is, which is awesome. But it, it, that is also a testament to, um, 
to how much he has learned and has done on his own. It wasn't all just, you know, I help, I help in the beginning just to try and paint the picture and help you help these channels to, um, uh, to understand how to think uh, for um, how to think for success on YouTube, which goes into thumbnails, titles, tags, all of that, all of that metadata stuff that happens on the back end, and um, and then once these guys understand and comprehend it, then they just roll with their own and and become massively successful, and then at that point they they don't need me anymore, which is which is fun to watch and cool to see. So yeah, I've I've done a, I've done a little bit of that and. Um, and it's a, it's very fun, very fulfilling. So, yeah, I can imagine. Well, since I'm conference administrator of the Dental Lab Association of Texas April conference, we could probably try to plan something. Since you're local anyway, now we just got to get Steve down here, and uh, we could put together a little little talk just like this in front of all the ortho lab owners that come there. And uh, yeah, I'd love and, that. That'd be awesome. And, be you could be our inspirational speaker of the day and <laughs> re really it's like it's it's okay it's good <laughs> it'll be okay get everybody yeah yeah get everybody on their feet <laughs> that's right cool yeah i'd love to do that scott what's interesting i gotta show you guys something um when i first met scott did you know how i met him Cade? i don't no. know if you uh -uh. Do you remember i did this article in lmt which yeah, is, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you remember that, if you can see that. Oh, yeah. His little picture was in my in my his little picture of a video on YouTube was in my article, and I'm like, who is this guy making his own? How I made my own retainer? I'm like, what? <laughs> so I watched his video. Make a long story short, I watched his video, and he didn't get to the point. And so he's talking about his kids and stuff like that. I'm like, well, this guy's pretty interesting, but where does this? how to make a retainer come into play. And I like how you like, you know, you, you narrate your videos. Yeah. I'm sure that you're learning how to do that where you're telling a story to keep the audience interested. Mm -hmm. And I, I try to do that a little bit. It's definitely harder than just making a, you know, how to video if you're actually being creative, but that was one of the inspirations I was watching your video. And I was like, wow, you really did something interesting. You held my attention for that long to get your point. And then you said, oh, I'm a dentist. Because I'm thinking it's some bozo on YouTube making his own retainer. Because those videos are out there. We've seen them, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. People are like making their own stuff and how to close the diastema or taking the rubber. You know, never mind. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I do know what you're talking so, about. <laughs> so when I saw your video and I'm like, oh, he's an orthodontic technician. It was so cool to watch you because that's kind of got hooked in your channel just by watching your family grow. And it's it was, it was, my channel and how I kind of got going. And obviously, Cade, you are my inspiration too. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we're all we're all fans of each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We what well, what do you think of uh that kind of goes into one of the questions was the popularity of popularity of the cross niche videos like when you do orthodontic stuff on your family channel, what's the reception of that? Are they more views, less views? Well, so um, they, they actually are more views uh, because we our, our demographics are mainly teenagers. And, and so they're going through braces. They're getting their retainers. They want to know. I mean, don't you remember when you were a kid and you'd put a uh, paper clip in your mouth and be like, hey, look, I've got braces. Yeah. Or, look, I've got a retainer because the cool kids had retainers. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I knew from the beginning, as soon as I decided to put a retainer on YouTube, that it was going to be big for our demographics because kids like retainers. And, um, and so I, I thought, well, you know, it's, it'd be kind of cool to do this. How is it made type of a style of a video? And I've done, I, I don't know, probably five or six different retainers. All the retainers I've done are non-functional The They're just like, um, well, I can't say all of them, but most of the ones that I've done are non-functional. They're, they're novelty type retainers. Like I did one with a unicorn horn sticking out of the yeah. front. I'm sure you guys have seen that. But that, yeah. that has almost, uh, I think it has 2 million views on it. <laughs> and, uh, and so they're massively popular among our demographics. And so I thought, um, you know, if, if I were, obviously not, not every 
lab tech can do something like that because you know you you look at Steve's workflow right now and it's he's got so many um, he's got so many so much work coming in that it's like for him to stop and do do an, a unicorn retainer is like stupid. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> but um, you know I've had a lot of fun with it making the novelty stuff and so I I tried to kind of ang- you know uh, do a a unique angle there, but because our channel is focused on family, YouTube didn't like when I was deviating. And so after I made four or five videos, they stopped giving me traffic on those types of, Whoa. those types of uh, videos. Yeah. It's, which was disappointing, but, um, but at the same time, it, it illustrated a lot to me of, you know, what I need to be focusing on my YouTube channel. So, um, so I still have those videos up and they've, I think they have a cumulative, maybe 3 million views total. And, um, and it, yeah, it's, it was a it was fun it was fun to do stuff like that for a while. Scott, sure. can I, or is it one one question really fast? Could you tell the audience how much you made on that video, or is that you want to keep that private? And that's up no, to no, that's cool. yeah, that's totally fine. I, I kind of think of it as who's laughing now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Right? I, I did. I got a lot of criticism, um, not from other lab techs. I, I no. I, I take that back. I did get a lot of criticism from lab techs on on a couple of the retainers that I made because they were just off the wall. But right. um, you know, one that one retainer made us fifty six hundred dollars uh, in AdSense revenue. So uh, you know, where where it used to be, I, I get paid thirty five dollars a retainer. I'm like, well, I can I can make <laughs> you know two retainers a month, two or three retainers a month, and 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 if they all did that well, then we'd be then we'd be sitting pretty. And I don't have to work, you know, like three hours a month. <laughs> now again, you have to realize you have an audience that collectively helped you make. Like if someone did that right this second, don't plan on making. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's yeah, a little yeah, yeah. bit of a like you have that audience that was growing because when I started watching you, you were in the twenty thousand range in subscribers. Yeah. And yeah, it just took off like some massive growth because the word kind of gets like YouTube really spread you somehow yep. you were able to advance super fast. And so I would tell a viewer who's watching this, don't plan on making a unicorn video and becoming rich because it's, that's not how it works. Like, yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's a couple of things to, um, to say about that is yeah. Number one, if you're just starting, don't plan on, don't plan on making any money for a long time. Uh, you have to have drive and passion towards creating the content, and that has to outweigh the desire to make money on YouTube. So you you first have to start with your passion or your skill, and uh, and just get creating and learn the process. I would say for the first 100 videos, don't even just don't even think about money. Um, but with that said, if you if you plan on making 100 videos along the line, one of those videos is going to just take off. And, and it's going to outperform all the others. And that's a signal from YouTube that they've categorized that video a specific way. And if you want to capitalize on that category, double down on that type of video. Double down on the content, double down on the title, double down on the description, double down on everything other than making the exact same video. And then, right. then what will happen is the next video will do, will do um, it, it won't do as well, but it will do close to as well. And then the next video will do the same and the next video will do the same. And all of a sudden you've started to build a little bit of a community around that one type of video. And if you've got them in playlist categorized, right. And you do the right things within your video to promote your other content, then they're going to start looking at your other stuff because now they're a fan of you and they're in your community. And I know I'm kind of getting off on a little bit of a tangent, you know, and doing some training, but, um, but that's that's kind of how it works with uh, building and growing an audience, and then and then all of a sudden you'll get to the point where uh, you've got your thousand subscribers, four thousand hours of watch time, and you can monetize, and then you'll start to see uh, you'll start to see some a, a a stream of income develop there. But yeah, it won't happen right from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, I, I think my <laughs> most popular video was just an Adams class video that I shot real quick. Um, and it just keeps getting watched and watched and watched and watched. And, uh, and I, I think I didn't even have it in a playlist for the first few years <laughs> until I realized, <laughs> and then it, you know, it just kind of starts taking off 
because then they'll start watching the next one, you know, wrap around and then go to the next one and go to the next one. And in fact, I, we're getting a lot of chat on the chat here. You know, we got okay. Frank from uh, from France and uh, some from Canada, Morocco, Germany. Uh, nice. One, I love your videos. I'm a lab tech noob and reference back to them a lot when struggling with how to do something. And then we got Vlad. Hello from Romania. And then uh, hello from John Inman in New Orleans. So everybody's uh, in, enjoying the videos. Uh, and it goes back to your passion. You know, don't don't yep. expect to make money on your first videos. You're putting it out there for a reason. Uh, and people will hook on to that and, and ride the wave with you if they see you're a genuine person. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, awesome that you've got people from all over the world. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, that's great. I think Steve and I were talking about the other day. We're... I forget where he said his most of his views were from. Is like South America or mine was Philippines for a while. It, it, it like seems to pass around in a certain country. Your videos do, and I don't know if that's still true for Steve or not. Mine's mostly Brazil, Brazil, um, South, that's Af it. South America, and yours is way the, in Asia, which is yeah. <laughs> strange. But that's the way, and I can't get in that market. Like I've tried different things to see if they. You know, to try to translate a video to try to get into the Philippines, nothing. Like, I get 40 views. But then in Brazil, it, it's booming. So I don't know. It's, I think a lot of that has to do with Instagram. Uh, my Instagram account does well. And, and Instagram's funny is because the less time I see videos, the more popular they are. Like, if I take a video and just do Ben and Adam's class in like a 30 second video and just throw it up there with, out any effort, it'll get 5,000 views. And if I actually <laughs> spend an hour trying to make something, it'll get 150 likes, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's so different. So it's almost like, it's that whole thing about building momentum. You know, you have the audience and it just grows. Um, cool thing that Kate and I experienced is we've been, you know, meeting technicians from around the world, which is so cool because this was such a little niche thing in orthodontics. And I'm sure you probably knew when you were work, when you were doing orthodontic work is we were alone, you know, it's the only people you learn from is your doctors. Mm -hmm. Like it, everything was yep. so hush hush. Yep. And yep. secret Sam, like don't tell anyone cause everyone's going to take your work or so. I don't know what, I, I guess that was the kind of the mentality, but now it's just so awesome that you can, I can talk to someone across the world and they can answer like immediately with social media. It's just incredible. I can show a technique and they'll show me their technique. They're, they they want to share, you know, that's what I love about it. So YouTube has yeah. been a blessing. YouTube's awesome. Like I've learned more in the last two years than I've learned in my whole career. And, you know, it's funny that you, you say that Steve about the hush hush because to yeah, when, yeah, totally. It, it, when I got in, it, it really felt like, like communist Russia, you know, <laughs> don't say anything to right, anybody. Yeah. You don't want anybody to know. The Gestapo is going to get you. Now, and um, um, and when I met you and Cade, uh, it was totally different. And uh, and I'm I'm grateful that I, I met you while I was still in the lab. You know, because I I learned a lot from both of you guys. I actually watched a bunch of Cade's videos um, in the beginning when I was first you know, before I had my CDT. I mean, I'd been a, a lab tech for for a while, but I didn't have my CDT, and I I watched a lot of. Kate's uh, material. So thanks, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> you provide good looking, stuff, man. I was just looking. My first upload was December fifth, two thousand eight. So that, <laughs> I'm, I'm, pop video. I'm a, what? Is that the disco pop or whatever it was. Or? Oh, that yeah, that one was a popular yeah. one. Hey, you put Backstreet Boys music to or In Sync music to ones that actually that was January sixth, two thousand nine. That thing's got 20,000 views, <laughs> but I have a copyright, you know, infringement on it. So <laughs> that's the fun part. Uh, oh yeah. Lame. <laughs> yeah. What, what's interesting. I found about, I found about, or I find out about our videos is they like, I'll look at a video that I made two years ago and I'll sound looking, I'm looking at like, wow, that thing just kind of took off on its own. It's strange because they have natural, you know, green, you know, people are always wanting to learn people come into the, like 
there's new people that come into this environment all the time and they're just like, wow, they got all these videos and they can just go through. I think of it as like a library for you, yeah. Scott, you have yeah. a, your, your family is a library of videos. You know what I'm saying? That if you're watching your yep. family grow up, it's interesting in us. It's a little different because we're like, where you and I, when we grew up, when we were kids, we would go to the library. Now the library is on your phone and your butt. You know what I'm saying? The library right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's right there. You can Google anything. You can Google anything about orthodox or dental technology. And it's like, it's, it's just so different. It's so, so, and I always thought of my grandpa owned a business um, going back years. And he was always a very entrepreneurial spirit. And he would always be like, you just got to go for it. Like, don't hold back. And I always thought of, I, he's my inspiration to say, if I don't do this, I'll have regrets. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And why hold everything back? Because all it does is just like, why? Because of the Gestapo, you know, like, it, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. is someone going to be mad at me? Well, I guess I take that chance, you know? Well, but and then, I mean, look at, yeah, well, and you guys have been successful on YouTube because of that, because every you're capitalizing on the fear that other people have it's like no, if you're willing to share then you are different in the marketplace right like kate, kate you and kate have a service to sell uh, because nobody else is willing to do it and there's a demand right. for it and what's interesting for me is i have people call me all the time and they're just like i've seen your videos can i send you work and i'm just like uh, well, that's not really why I'm doing this, but <laughs> I'll take your name and number down in case there's a rainy day. You know what I'm saying? You never know. <laughs> like, but yeah, it is a good, it is a good advertising because people are seeing the quality. They're seeing what you're about. Totally. Um, yeah. Same totally. thing with you, Cade. You're well, and, and I've, we've actually come at two different ways about this. I created retainer designer, always separate from my, my lab. You know, it was a separate entity. It it was out there just for for the taking for everybody. Uh, and y'all may not know, it started with retainerdesigner.com where I created a free online retainer selector where you choose your colors and you can make a swirl and all that stuff. And so then I started getting questions because kids were getting on there, making it, printing it, taking it to the doctor. And then the labs were emailing me going, how do you make this thing? And so I was like, I'll make a video. And so I made a video, put it on YouTube, and I got so many views, just not from labs, but from kids just curious on how this stuff's made. And so yep. that's how the whole thing started. And so I never associated with my lab. And Steve, that is your lab. You know, it's right. it's weird to see the two different worlds uh, of directions of how we came about. I just, this. One, I just wonder, Kate, if you would have grabbed that in what you started back then if you would have grabbed it and ran with it and just like made a video like every day and just like pump this stuff out, your channel would be like crazy because, yeah. because what I do know is I saw his first video, Scott, if you can imagine this, I saw his video on my YouTube homepage. That's how young it was. <laughs> Cause I happened to be typing in orthodontics on Google, you know, like looking up something about anything. And yeah. it, that Google information was figuring it out through YouTube right when Google bought them or um, took over Google. And so here, the first thing on my homepage, can you imagine being on the homepage of someone's page? You're like, now that's impossible. You got to be, you got to have a hundred million <laughs> subscribers. You got to be Casey Neistat to be on the homepage. Yeah. And here, his face was on my homepage. I'm like, who's this guy? He's making videos. <laughs> I'm like, well, I clicked on him. That's how I knew of him, which is kind of funny to think of how popular you could have been. Oh yeah, <laughs> you had that. You had that niche, and I don't think I ever thought of it like a business. Uh, I was no. just whenever I was starting Ortho Lab, I didn't have a book. I didn't have. I just had a doctor teaching me, and I didn't yeah. know anywhere to go to to learn this stuff. And and so I went to lab school, and I, I said, you know, when I get out, I'm just going to try to share this with everybody I know because you know they were they talked about in, in lab school the teachers people would have a towel on their shoulder and you'd be bending or something like that and they throw their somebody would come by and they throw their work over their their towel over the work so nobody could see what they're doing i'm like that's just the wrong way to do this yeah and <laughs> secretive yeah it was stupid to think of it that way but the community and and maybe you can talk some more about you know courting your community you know scott and, and you know some tips on 
how to really connect the best methods for connecting with the community and, you know, your fans, so to speak. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so there's, uh, there's some, there are some, um, there's psychology goes into it and, and I don't know how deep I want to go cause I don't want people to feel, um, used, but th th that's not the intention on, right. on YouTube at all. Right. We, we know that there is, every time I post a video, there are people who watch who think of me as a celebrity. I don't think of myself as a celebrity at all, but because they're watching me on a screen and I'm not there and I get, you know, I'll get a million views on some of my videos. Um, they perceive me as being, being larger than life. Right. And so in, in Hollywood, um, you walk, you go to the movies and you see, uh, George Clooney or, or, um, the rock, or, you know, you watch them on the big screens and, and you're like, man, these guys are select a list or celebrities. That would be so cool to hang out with him or whatever. And with YouTube, we have the opportunity to hang out with our audience in the comments or respond to their comments on our videos, things like that. And so every time you do that, uh, you are, um, um, you're solidifying a two-way relationship with your community. And so that's, that's most important is to solidify that two-way relationship. You do that through the comments, you do that through videos and, and shouting them out like Cade, like you did a few minutes ago, talking to your audience who, who's watching from all over the world. Um, that, that's community building 101 with YouTube. It's like these people see you as something larger in life and you, uh, and if you act on uh, that emotion, then you can develop, com uh, develop a community. Uh, I don't think of it as, e e e a lot of people will use that, um, use that knowledge to do, uh, to do things that aren't good, um, like to convince or manipulate their audience. What we're trying to do is to just, is to say, hey, um, there's, a, there's an opportunity here to, uh, to uh, talk to these people and teach them things and I can do a much better job of doing that if they'll come back to each one of my videos. I can train them better if they'll come back to each one of my videos. Um, for us, our whole intention is there's a lot of, a lot of kids who leave, leave in the comments, I don't have parents or my mom mm. is an alcoholic. We get that a lot. Um, my, my dad left us when we were little. You guys are my surrogate, surrogate parents, you know, things like that. And, um, and so we build a community and to, to welcome them into our family. And when we see people in public, you know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not an awkward thing. It's a, um, it's a, it's a hug or it's a, uh, um, it's, it's, sometimes it's an emotional event when people will come up to us. And anyway, the, the whole point is that community building is such an important part of YouTube uh, because you are, um, you know, you're the leader, you have stewardship over these people who are watching you. And so you want to bring them into your fold. Otherwise, they're going to go to someone else's fold who might not be teaching correct things or who might be manipulating them or, you know, it's, I could go on and on and on about that. But I think I, I, I think I made the point clear and hopefully I didn't make it in a way that makes people feel like <laughs> used uh, by their, uh, by the people that they follow. But, um, um, yeah, I mean, community is a central part of, of you, building a YouTube channel. So you still have time to answer all these questions? And <laughs> <laughs> so what we I do... you get a lot. Yeah. We, yeah, so, so, um, some videos more than others. Today I, I, I posted a video. It didn't, it didn't get very many uh, comments, so it was relatively easy. But what we'll do is we'll try and go on there for a half hour, 45 minutes as soon as we upload and respond to all the comments that come in immediately. And then that, that also entices people to come earlier uh, mm -hmm. and, and watch right in the beginning. Because the first hour after uploading is the most important hour on YouTube. Uh, that, right. That's what determines uh, long-term success for your video. And so um, there's some str strategy to doing that as well. <clears throat> well, uh, you know, we got, you know, 10 minutes to go before the end of the hour. Um, it, transition that into you did a Facebook post recently about um, going to schools. You, you, you made a good point about you being a surrogate parent and, and doing a positive message. And maybe you can explain that what the initials are on your hat to everybody and kind of what your 
um, you're playing it, you're wanting to do with schools and stuff. Yeah. So, so my hat, this is our, some of our unofficial merch. This is uh, uh, YCDAT means you can do amazing things. That's been our message for the last while that we try to instill in all of our videos that we try to um, get across to each one of our viewers is that we want these kids, especially the ones who are struggling in life, who, who might not have a positive example or role model to understand that they are capable of doing anything in life that they set their mind to. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that's the hardest thing is that um, you, you watch these kids grow up with self-doubt and with low confidence. And then they do things that, um, uh, that, that turn them into reactive people in the future, right? They're not, they're not being proactive. They're reacting to their situation, which can lead you to a downward spiral in life. And, you know, we want the, what's best for everybody who's watching. So our, our message is you can do amazing things. And, and um, we've prepared a, uh, a fun um, uh, a school assembly that we're, we're wanting to take around to different schools that illustrates um, through the comments, you know, people leave comments on our, on our videos and we'll use those as examples in our presentation as to, uh, it, it, as to, um, you know, what could possibly go, be going on in their life and that, that we can help with, you know, so we talk about depression and bullying and, and uh, all of those hard topics, but then we also talk about the, give them some tools to, uh, um, to help make them more successful in life and help them get thinking on the right, uh, in the right way to uh, give them more of a, a success-oriented mindset. Yeah, yeah that's great. Oh, Scott, um, oh, Scott, I would say, or Kate, I'm sorry for talking. Um, Scott, if anyone is watching who has kids or grandkids, you're an inspirational channel. Like, I watch the videos and I'm inspired. Like, I'm thinking about things like, because I have grown teenagers and one in college and I look back at some of the things I'm like, Oh, I wish I would have done that. And a lot of things I did do, you know what I'm saying? A lot of things we relate to, yeah. like, you know, but I definitely see how your channel would influence the kids in the right direction. Like I definitely see it and um, it's inspiring. So for anyone who's got grandkids in this business and ortho, because after Scott is our ortho brother and the, even though he thinks he's a YouTuber and everything, he's, he's still an ortho guy. We know. We know if the if the sky fell down, work you're coming on our dark side. You know, just, you're gonna do amazing things. So I would say you just run with it. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. Run with it. And appreciate that. I, I, that's what. Like I said, if anyone's watching this who has grandkids who are growing up. And they want to see something interesting because just like you're watching your daughters grow and, and take it, take chances. I love it. Like to get up and do a solo, you know how hard that is, but to see someone else do it is a totally inspiring to see how you guys handle the pressure and see how you, how you're explaining it to them, like how to handle the pressure. And just those little family things are so cool that it's definitely motivating to like, like I said, it's a great channel to watch. So if anyone's watching and it, you know, it sounds like, oh, that's not for me. Give it a shot because it's definitely something that's going to help someone. Like you said, you're helping kids. And, and, I, and I've seen the comments. I've read them before. Like, I wish you were my dad. You know, I wish you were my mom. Yeah. It's so it's cool. It's like, wow. But and heartbreaking at the same cents. time. And heartbreaking yeah. at the exact yeah, same time. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, it's... wow, I just want to go hug my kid, you know, like crazy I, yeah i, I want to hug them too i'm like oh and i also want to talk to their parents and tell them to step it up a little <laughs> yeah. bit yeah. yeah that's crazy but it's it's a lot stronger of a comment than what steve and i get it's like oh thank god you helped me pass my dental exam <laughs> you know <laughs> they're so, like steve i wish you were my dad <laughs> then you could do my lab work for me <laughs> nobody nobody has said that <laughs> well watch now go back to your channel yeah somebody's gonna say that right now on your yeah, channel <laughs> yeah. some 35 year old dental technician i wish you were my dad <laughs> that's, that's, that gets in a weird weird spot yeah. <laughs> I, do get, I do get this one though i wish i could work with you or i want to work yeah. with oh, you i get I've a lot of those get, yeah you yeah. got those i get them all yeah. over like i i can get my visa and i'll come work with you i'll live with you for free i'm like no you're not <laughs> you're not living with me <laughs> so, 
<laughs> you know, it's funny. I still, I, I'll get comments all the time on, on our, um, on my retainer videos from people asking me to, to make them a retainer, asking if I can make them a retainer. I get emails all the time still for it as well. And I'm like, I, don't, I haven't been in the business in a long time. I'm sure I can, re I remember how to do it. It's something you'll never forget, but. You can take the ortho can... technician out of the lab, but you can't take the lab out of the ortho technician. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And you're right about that. If we were working with the general public, we'd all be millionaires because I get so many requests for like, can you make my retainer? You know, please, please, please. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> or our saddest comments are, oh, I only got a clear one. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm sorry. It's, I don't have anything. To, the, the doctor only offered you that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I got an Essex tray. What should I do? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's we'll wind this up unless Steve has any more questions for you. No, uh, Scott, it was a pleasure having you on the channel. I'm glad you took a, you know an hour out of your busy life too to to um, explain about YouTube, explain what you're doing. Oh, Definitely totally. No, I channel. love you guys. You guys are you guys are awesome. I I uh, I still feel like a lab tech when I'm talking to you guys. So yeah. and there's some good memories that come from that. I had a so, lot of good memories in the lab. Just forget the bad ones. Just sniff the <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just sniff it. If you get the bad ones and it goes all the way. It's a, yeah, yeah. It, that, that monomer, it sure makes the day go by quick, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it was well, a blur. So we'll, we'll meet up in Texas. <laughs> yep, yeah, totally. Visit yeah, I'll, Mr. I'll contact y'all. Try to get uh, get try to get y'all to the, come to the conference. We can do something fun together there. Uh, but I have put the link to Scott's youtube channel in the description below it's called scott and camber and uh just go ahead and subscribe to him and, and click the bell and you'll get updates uh you were doing daily last summer and yeah we upload now wednesday through sunday so mondays and tuesdays are our day offs oh okay good yeah i yeah. need some days off um, yeah yeah definitely <laughs> and i've put steve's channel it in the description below and later on i'll add them all as a little bubble uh but uh i, I want to thank you all for coming on and uh talking with us today about this it, this was actually probably more for me and steve than for the general public we got a lot of good insight <laughs> and uh, i appreciate you coming on today definitely yeah anytime you guys have any questions just uh feel free to message we got our group chat <laughs> yeah thanks guys <laughs> yep, all right totally well until the next time, happy bending, or you can do amazing things, right? There you go. There yeah. you go. <laughs> hey, I got my order for my shirt coming in today. I saw that. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. Cool. Thanks what, for supporting us, Steve. Shirt, shirts? What's this? <laughs> we, came, we came up with the merch line um, about a month ago, and, and so we, we ran a two-week campaign to sell sh some shirts, and Steve was one of our supporters. So we appreciate oh, that, awesome. man. I'll buy Thanks. your shirt too. Don't worry. I'll buy yeah. your shirt too. <laughs> you get that that tip. You get that tippet um, uh, scrubs there. The tippet scrubs. Yeah, yeah. I'll sell these, and they, the ones that want to come work for me, they can just act like they're working for me, <laughs> from where they're at. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, all right. Awesome. I'll see everybody later. Uh, y'all gotta stay on for a second, and uh, everybody else, we'll see y'all next week. <laughs>